here today at take aim training range on today's episode of watching me have a good time we are discussing ammunition and its future this particular example that i'm showing today is loaded by aac but the casing is designed by a company called shell shop for the most part ammunition in general has stayed very much the same in terms of its casing utilizing a brass case and steel with the imported russian stuff Militaries as well as civilian shooters are moving to better materials for newer loadings and newer rounds than the traditional brass casing. A perfect example would be the uh, ammunition that was just recently adopted by the United States Army um, that utilizes a hybrid system of a traditional brass case with a steel base that allows for much higher pressures and therefore better results downrange. And so today you can see that we on the civilian market are starting to get options too that offer more benefits over traditional brass cases and traditional ammunition. This particular example is the shell shock that uses a steel and nickel alloy for the construction of its case and a very unique shaped base on it. The benefits of that being you can load these to much higher pressures than you can a standard brass case, which would most likely have a rupture. You can get higher velocities and, uh, in theory, a better impact on targets. They also claim that the construction of the, uh, the case allows for more reliable extraction and feeding. I don't have a way to test that, but that is very cool. This ammunition also weighs half as much as traditional brass casing loaded ammunition. They say it's cool to the touch. Uh, still pretty hot probably not as hot as brass when injected but uh, I don't know if I would say call it cool to the touch so this is the shell shock casing using their technology loaded by AAC featuring a 77 grain OTM projectile match ammunition essentially my understanding is that they will offer it or maybe even do offer it in 55 grain um, loading so in three that would drive the cost down uh, and maybe even competitive with traditional brass cased ammunition and there are other manufacturers and other offerings available to civilian to the civilian market one of them that comes to mind is a polymer type ammunition it has very many similar features in terms of weight and things like that let me talk about the weight for a second why would it be important that ammunition or why would that be a big deal that ammunition weighs half as much as what we've been using for 50 years 60 years whatever and so in theory, that would allow an infantryman or whoever, that would allow the military, you could either cut weight by carrying newer offerings, or you could double the amount of ammo you carry. So that is, that's a pretty big deal. So to me, I think it's gonna be, uh, well only the market will decide ultimately, but to me, these types of new rounds are the future of ammunition that we will be shooting. The benefits that are given by modern offerings in terms of case design and loadings and things manufacturing, this will be what people will start to use in the future, whether that's in the military or in the civilian side of shooting. Uh, this is probably what we're going to start seeing is maybe not literally this particular offering, but something like it or a combination of, of the types. I got some ballistics gel, 10% FBI ballistics gel, and uh, we're going to test this round out of uh, a few different barrel lengths to see if it's capable and what it compares to to what I consider a gold standard, at least for me, 
uh, of matching ignition, which is IMI Razor Core. I find that that's a good barometer, so to speak, of good ammunition. It's relatively inexpensive for what it is, and you can usually find it. It's not the best, not the worst. But, but before we shoot this bad boy, I wanted to thank today's sponsor, Rebels Raiders. Check them out for uh, good quality gear. They have drops at different times. I believe they have plate carriers and things like that in the works, but they also sell surplus and other things. Also check out their t-shirts. Their uh, shirts, great designs. And then on top of that, the proceeds go to charity. First shot will be with a 10-5, one and seven twist. So, hit a little too low, so I'm gonna give it another one with the 10.5. <laughs> so as you can see here, pretty impressive explosive results in the sense of the, uh, the permanent wound cavity. A lot of fragmentation, but this is 16 inch gel. So uh, I'm not sure if that would meet the length that's required to the FBI spec, but absolutely brutal in terms of permanent uh, wound cavity. You can even see over here, um, the bottom of that round has it flowered out and then you have shrapnel everywhere. So let's see if I can hit it with a 16 inch. All right, 16 inches. If that works. Okay, look. So that's a pretty mean wound tract. It looks like it starts. Looks like it starts pretty early on, within three inches, four inches, I'd say. And uh, it drops fragments everywhere. And then actually there's the whole projectile towards the end and it looks like a fragment shot out of the block. But uh, that is a devastating wound. If you, know, like, you imagine getting hit by that, that is ridiculous. Wow, it's a lot of energy in these things. Truthfully, comparing the middle track and then the top one, the 10.5 and then the 16, they're actually pretty similar. Maybe even just a little bit more of a permanent wound cavity right there on the 10.5. But in terms of retention, they look pretty similar and they went pretty similar distance with the 10.5 having to see more penetration. And I'd have to pull them out and weigh them. I'm probably not going to. This is just more of a demonstration of what a uh, 77 OTM will do in a medium that is like this. So, in terms of results in the gel, uh, you'll have to make a, you'll have to decide for yourself if that's something that you find sufficient or not. It is, uh, looks like it dumped a ton of energy pretty early on. Uh, how that compares to other loadings and other offerings that are similar. You will have to do your own research in terms of that. The purpose of this video is really to highlight the availability of more modern ammunition to uh, the market and what that means for us as shooters. I'm pretty confident in saying that you know, several years down the road, you'll start to see brass getting a little less popular just due to the inherent benefits of newer designs and modern ammunition. That's not to say brass will probably be around for a very long time, and I shoot mostly brass, but uh, down the road, um, I could certainly see that there would be, uh, your money might be better spent on something else like traditional. And with that said, um, 
Another thing, it can be reloaded more than brass. My understanding is they're nine millimeter. Um, it can be reloaded like 30 times or something like that, which is significantly longer lifespan than out of a brass casing. I don't think they have dies for 556 yet, um, but eventually they might offer that. I'm not really sure. You'd have to ask them as you just blow vape around. Yeah, so uh, thanks for watching me. Have a good time. <laughs> that is the shell shock. That is the <laughs> the AAC 77 grade OTM shell shock.